was happening on the pitch so um, we're very happy with what we saw on the pitch um, our first first um, go round at the girl cup level so we were more than happy with what we saw um, I, I'm, I'm still a coach so you know I have, I have my comments <laughs> but from strictly administrative level um, and executive level we're very happy with what we saw and um, you know we're, we're just looking to to continue the upward trajectory of all of our programs. Kyle, as a coach now, you, you, a lot of time to reflect um, from a coaching standpoint, because I'm going to ask you on about a player standpoint and reflecting on, you know, you had a few days now, the, it's it's kind of winding down because you're now going to turn that key to get everybody back in, in full for, for the other two games coming up or four games coming up. But um, looking back, um, anything stand out in your mind? <laughs> Looking back, obviously the first game, it's, <laughs> you know, burning. that's the game that's still burning up inside me that we felt that we probably done enough to win three games on that, in that first half, you know what I mean? You know, but the games played for 90 minutes. We didn't achieve what we wanted out of that first game. And um, so that's disappointing. That's, that's probably one, one moment the whole tournament in, in that first half. And that team's in the semifinals. Yeah, and that team's in the semifinals. I was watching them play, and I was with my my mother, my daughter, my <laughs> two sisters, because then I was just so upset that it wasn't <laughs> us. And they were like, you're going to let it go. And, but it's, you know, I after they said let it go, I think it's going now. Right. <laughs> but it was, you know, just the reality of it um, really hit in, like, how far we really could have ended in this tournament. Mm -hmm. And Jaylon, for you as a player, um, you, you've been playing with a lot of these guys for a long time, but looking at it um, from from a standpoint of being on the field, being involved, how do you reflect back on, on those three matches? Um, pretty much, I feel like we definitely should still be in the Girl Cup. Um, we played our hearts, but I felt personally, I had no idea. Um, and it's one moment that stands out in my head the most that people just keep reminding me about. It's that one tackling Costa Rica where I got a yellow card. People just remind me about that every single day. Like, you know you should have got a red. You know you should have got a red. I was like, no way. I planned it. I was not going to a red. It shouldn't have been a yellow either. Yeah, so that people keep calling to me, congratulating me. Right. Me and stopped me earlier today, congratulating me on how I played and how well the team did. Were you surprised that, that it all came together? I know you guys were listening to Kyle and Ray and the rest of the coaching staff um, about playing in a system, playing a formation, sticking to the plan. Um, were you surprised that it all came together so quickly uh, with a lot of guys from, from outside of Bermuda coming in? I mean, we've been working on this for probably over a year now, so mm -hmm. it's not like we just started working on this formation and how we play in our structure, but the fact that I could see that it actually worked in a, such a big game. It's still crazy to me because all this time, I think that's Premier's biggest downfall is the structure. We never had structure and organization in our playing. We were just there whatever, and that always was what let us mm -hmm. down. Kyle, when you when you start putting stuff together, I know you always talk about you know my mate, you know, talking to the other coaches, trying to put other things in place. Was it rewarding standing there at times to say, okay, that trusted in, 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 in what, we, what we've put in place? Yes, especially from when you look at our first Nations League game to now, you know, I think that was a telling moment, a crucial moment in the whole sort of up to now. You know, we, done a, we made a couple of changes um, in, in the way the team went. 
as far as changing the captaincy. Um, we, I thought we just needed a new identity at that time. A couple of the coaches thought I was a little crazy, but I think um, no one can argue about the captain and, and Dante Lavrov. And it's just served that leadership that not saying that Reggie didn't do a great job, but um, he, Dante, like, lives it. You know what I mean? And he brings people to, to together. He makes people accountable on the field. So that, that took us a long way, really did, um, throughout the rest of the Nations League. Because my intentions was to rotate the captaincy until we, you know, we find the right balance in that department. Um, but has has done so well with it, so you know we don't we don't trouble it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> President, coach, um, looking at it um, after we lost that First Nation League game um, to uh, I can't remember who we lost to, but um, Aruba. Yeah, Aruba, Aruba. <laughs> I remember I remember a slight conversation you and I had, uh, and you seemed to say, "Don't worry, we'll get it right. We'll get it right. We'll get it right." Um, did did you expect it as quickly as it did the very next game to pull off a big win and then to get past um, El Salvador a top a top opponent? Yeah, I did. I I think the um, the the scheduling worked in our favor as well. Um, you know, had we had we um, you know potentially played El Salvador first, might have been a demotivating factor for us, and we may never have recovered. Um, but I I was confident. Um, this, this, where we are is, is years and years of work, you know, um, and, and I had to have confidence in the players and the coaching staff. So it's a testament to them to learn the lessons from the Arima game, make, make the changes that they did, um, and come back stronger for it, you know. So, um, you know, I guess I'm, I'm great enough, so I've been around long enough <laughs> to, um, to have seen the development of everyone. Um, from players and coaches. Some of these coaches developed with me. Um, so, you know, I, I was confident, um, quietly. You know, it, it wasn't running around Bermuda saying, you know, what, what about you put the heart on that side of the one? You, you make those things run. You know, it wasn't that sort of thing. But I was quietly confident because I know that the work that has been going on um, for well over a decade. And um, to see it, you know, come to fruition is, you know, re really, really rewarding. How has the Bermuda performance been received amongst FIFA and your contacts around here? Because I know what it's like in Comic <laughs> How has it been in FIFA? I know the Women's World Cup is going on, but I, sure. I know that I look over and see what's going on. Yeah, it, it's, um, you know, you got it. You can, I keep getting messages um, via email, via WhatsApp, you know, congratulations to, to the president. Um, and you know those congratulations aren't really mine um, to to hold on to. Those are those are for everyone. Um, it's for the whole organization. And I said it the other day that all of these players are homegrown players. Um, they they are their the foundation was laid right here in Bermuda on our bumpy, dry surfaces um, by some incredible coaches. And um, that hasn't lo been lost on on the rest of the world. Um, you know, the question gets asked, you know, do you have any naturalized players? Um, and the answer is no, we don't. Um, you know, do you have any foreign staff? Well, actually, we don't. You know, the, the, the one person who doesn't who or the Bermuda, Bermuda passport was born here sort of thing. So, you know, it, it, to have a Bermuda product um, that, has, that has risen to the occasion is, um, you know, for me, I, my chest is out every meeting I go to, you know, so <laughs> I'm happy, you know. You um, still do Sometimes I have to turn sideways, you know, but um, no, it's, it's, it's rewarding. It, it hasn't gone unnoticed by everyone. It, all, the, all the people that's worked with Bermuda over the years have, um, you know, have, have called or emailed to say, you know, I'm really, really happy, you guys. The, the structure that I saw so long ago is, is you know, bearing fruit so it's it's um you know it's it's fun right now the, the meetings are fun you know i got off the plane i'm excited where are you from bermuda oh you know I, you know what i mean i wear my jerseys a lot these days <laughs> so yeah no it's, it's it's great it's great and it's great that the world is taking it you know Jalen, for you how, how much of the performance do you think has inspired other local based players to sort of want to get into the program it's definitely inspired a lot of local based players 
a lot of them come and trying to come jump to me and tell me that they're trying they want to come out and they're gonna get fit and all that. So it's definitely brought attention to the Liberty. And how much of the players are challenging those guys to just do that, get fit number one, get involved with the program because it, you guys have to be very structured and disciplined in, in doing what the coaches were asking. Yeah. Well, I personally tell whoever tells me that to come out, I hope to see you there, but it's just whether they want to do it or not at the end of the day. Right. Kyle, looking forward to obviously uh, Panama, which is not far away. Um, how do we plan to, to, to work out? September the 5th, isn't it? Right. <laughs> <laughs> July. Yeah. July no. <laughs> well, how do we plan to work out? Do we, do we stay on the same vein as, as with the local base players training as much as they were um, continuously? Because we're getting ready for a start of a new domestic season as well. And, and then you have mm -hmm. guys who will be starting um, overseas as well. So how do we, how do we plan yeah. to structure that? It's... it's um, we we know that players need a little bit of a break, and uh, you know they they don't want to go through that rigorous um, running <laughs> that we were doing, you know, not too long ago. But um, I guess that's a part of playing football, like twenty uh, or all the time. Like we're you know around the clock, sort of. It's no real breaks, like all we were having maybe two three years ago. So we have to look at. Um, giving them a little bit of a break, and then we have to mix it in with their clubs, their preseasons, and make sure that we get the senior national team players or anyone that wants to be a part of it. They they have to be up to speed, you know. Come end of August, they have to be, you know. We we can go into uh, playing against Panama not at the levels that we were, you know. For the Gold Cup, and I think some of the some of the players, uh, credit to them, they they pushed themselves mm -hmm. because we mentally tested them in training sessions. You know, I know a few of them wanted to to give up in, in <laughs> some of the running that we were doing, and some of the guys that were there um, that didn't make the, the the team. You know, they they found it tough doing it, and you could see that they found it tough, and mm -hmm. some of them didn't come back. Um, rather they, you know, they knew they probably weren't going to make the, the team or, or they just said, this is just not cut out for me. Um, but, yeah, we've we got to we gotta make it tough for them again because we, if, in order to do well, you have to train well. Yeah. Yeah. How, much, how much conversation will you be having with, with the, the league coaches to ensure that maybe what they're doing in training sort of um, structured around what you guys are trying to do nationally because um, if, if, if the players are doing that... Well, my, my main focus will be is just making sure that they're fit. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, fit, and that's the most important thing. I think once we get time with them, we have a system that works for us. Yeah, I mean, I think all the players, when they come back, they know what to expect as far as the way the assassins are going to be and you know so there's no real surprise to them uh, but we have to really gauge their fitness and make sure that that is at the level that it is and because they have pushed their bodies to that level it's not going to be hard for them to get to that level again mr president are we still challenged with funding coming up with these nations cup games guys getting off from work, um, you know, we play one day, probably leaving the next or the following day, heading off to Panama, and then we gotta do the same thing, similar thing when we play mm. Mexico. How, how, is, how challenging is that from a standpoint of this room out to the corporate world? It's still very challenging, um, probably even more so now because we're, we're stomping with the big dogs, right? <laughs> so, um, you know, we're, we're in a group with, with US and, and um, the top echelons of CONCACAF whose budgets are 30 million for the year, you know? Um, and ours, trust me, is <laughs> <laughs> nowhere near that. Um, so, so yeah, funding is, is challenging. Um, you know, yeah, we, we have, we have part-time footballers who are, who are in, the, in the team, um, and, and those who want to make the team, some of those are part-time footballers as well. So, um, yeah, it's very challenging. I'm, I'm anxious to get the debrief from the coaching staff um, because I, I really want to look at what it is that we need to, to change 
to one stay at this level. That's the, the um, you know short term goal for the senior man anyway is to stay in, in Nations League Eight. Um, so what do we need to do? You know, um, what what fresh ideas are there? What what changes do we need to make? Um, and you know, who, who am I going to look for for, for more funding? You know, <laughs> um, because you know this is where we want to be. Um, and we know what our opponents' budgets look like, um, and, and our budget's got to get close to that. So we know that already. So even you know, even that work has already started, um, and and we're just just gonna keep plugging away at it and make sure that um, the players and the coaches focus on football. Jim, Jim a lot of people don't get to see a lot of behind the scenes stuff that the players go through. You've had a chance to to live it at that level. Um, what was it like for you um, being in a regimented um, structure of stuff times, with the training times, eating times, meeting times, <laughs> all of that? As a player, it's a little different, isn't it? Yeah, well, I've been part of the national team for a long time now, so I'm kind of gotten used to all the structure and the regimen that comes with it. But this was a bit of a step up compared to what we used previously done. Mm -hmm. um, every day we had set times for everything you had to do the following in the morning what we were doing for the majority of the day and we had to stick to that schedule make sure we didn't oversleep make sure we didn't become late to certain meetings and and dinners and lunches and stuff so it's definitely different yeah. <laughs> it's definitely different but it's a good thing it keeps us mentally focused on our goal being in the change room they're saying that you can't go out until <laughs> two minutes to this or, or, or all yeah. that, and you're anxious to get out because you want to have a walk around, you want to get amongst the crowd, you want to be out there. So amongst the team, what are you guys discussing back there? Because you can hear the noise outside, can you? Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah, you, it, was, it, was, it was a bit noisy. Um, but you guys, I don't know, but some, some guys personally like doing the little corners and get the mental ready for the game. and. Others talk and laugh and have jokes, so it's just about how you are personally and what makes you ready for the game. Kyle, as a, as a player and as a, now as a coach, um, do you see a lot of what you went through with these guys here? Um, yeah, especially on this last trip, you know, when we were in Costa Rica for the week leading up to it, training. You know, it, it was make it made me feel like yeah, I remember doing this. You know, <laughs> as a professional, you ain't got to worry about going. For me myself personally, I gotta go drive my taxi, or you know, it's, it's something else. It's, it's just straight, straight football, and there's no better feeling than that. You know, and when you're in that environment, all you want to do is stay in that environment. Um, so we got some work to 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 do. To, to be in that sort of space, but we know we can still do it with with all being in that total space. We have a concern that you guys didn't get a chance to train on that pitch in Costa Rica, because uh, I know you trained somewhere else. But but being on that surface, no, not at all. Um, I mainly because I didn't the surface that we was training on. It was a good quality surface, mm -hmm. even though that that surface probably ripped up a lot more than at, at the stadium. Mm -hmm. But we pretty much knew how the, the pitch was going to run, um, and I think from us being there, the under tennis, myself personally, and Saji and Liam had been there, and uh, mm -hmm. Jaquille and Milan, Maurice, so. You know, we we all knew what to expect before we even got there. So that makes it, especially in my mind, it made it a lot, lot different for me. Mr. President, how did you watch that first game? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I mean, I, I actually invited select people to my house um, to sit down and watch it. I, I like to watch games like that by myself normally. Right. Um, because I do turn into the coach. <laughs> That's what I'm I turn into this. I turn into this other person. Um, so I did. I did invite a select group to my house to watch. It. And um, you know, again, it was it was it was fantastic. And um, you know, I had to I had to take a few moments to just absorb it all, um, because 
you know, this is this is what we dreamed of, really. You know, that we've been talking about being the top team in the Caribbean and making the Girl Cup for a very long time. So, yeah, um, you know, I had to I had to have a private little viewing party <laughs> with some people that would look at me strange when I turned into that that um, that, that coach uh, when he saw it line. So yeah, it was good. So we score in the forty fifth minute. Referee blows the whistle for half time. What goes through you as a, as a former coach, as, as a president, as you're sitting there, <laughs> but you have no no control. Over no control. <laughs> well, I I mean, you know, in all honesty, um, I thought back to when I was a coach, and you know, and even as a player. So I mean, for example, if that was if that was Neops Lewis, for example, the changing room, he would probably come in the changing room and lose his complete mind. <laughs> and nothing that we were doing as a team would have been right. Yeah. That's probably what he would have done. Um, and that's something I did as a coach as well. Right? So the team comes in buzzing, all excited about what they just did, and the coach is ripping into him. Yeah. So that's why I was thinking like. I hope Kyle's giving them the hairdryer. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there's there's some so many thoughts that I had at that time. Yeah, yeah. For you, Kyle, the atmosphere. I mean, you played in England amongst thousands and thousands of people, but was this atmosphere a little different? Yeah, it was kind of strange because of I always had people saying the games were sold out, but because it was a double header. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. the first game, it was I I expected more people there. Especially when we, we started our match. You know, more people showed up, but it wasn't a sellout in Costa Rica. But the atmosphere was good. Yeah. You know, especially, you know, the, the Bermudians that traveled. Mm -hmm. It was nice for us to play away from them and to have supporters. You know, people cheering us on. So that was nice. Um, and as the games went on, you know, you got to Dallas, it was a little bit more um, supporters at that match. And and then to top it off, the last game was was phenomenal. You know, the, the you just that atmosphere on the last day. I just wanted it in the next <laughs> round. That's all. <laughs> you know, imagine what it was. People would have been scrambling to get to right. to to the next stage. Right. You know, yeah. because oh man, but it was it was fantastic. You know, to lead your country to a major tournament like that, and it just drives you on to, to have more. Jalen, mm -hmm. walking out in New Jersey, hearing that noise, seeing all those people, we, because to be honest, we don't get that here unless mm -hmm. we score. Mm -hmm. But when you guys walked out, you would have thought you scored your third goal <laughs> of your yeah. game. What was that moment like for you? Hey, that was a great feeling. You just saw pink everywhere in yeah. the stands. <laughs> it was just, I was just buzzing the whole time. I was just so anxious to play. Right. It was, yeah, it was, it was a few times now we had the floor. Yeah, I was just ready. <laughs> well, gentlemen, I want to thank you for your time because I know you guys have a meeting to, to address the um, post-mortem. But um, thank you very much for your time. We look forward to um, getting back into training, getting back amongst the team, and, of course, Panama on September 5th, and then in Panama on the 9th, I believe. So good yeah. luck. Yeah. Get more players out. Thank you. Thank you very much.